come along with me on a on a journey. Truck and dog. A moving truck rumbles softly to itself. Paint on its side are the words Lizette's Antiques, Furniture, Glassware, Curiosities. An old hound in a straw hat. Both have seen better days. This is cool looking. Joseph sits between gas pumps in a Queen Anne armchair. His hair is gray and his glasses darkened. Damn. You hear that wreck? Truck full of bottles. I don't know. Beer bottles? Whiskey? Lost a tire or something. Spilled booze and glass all over the interstate. What a mess. I hope they don't come down here looking for anything. Blew a damn fuse and it's all shut off. I hear a dog. What's your dog's name? Just some dog. I don't know his name. Sure. We got a couple old cats that lurk around. Well, I bet he's a nice dog anyway. Well behaved or he'd be after my dinner. Hey, here's some jerky for him. I made it myself. Didn't turn out too well, but... I bet a dog will eat it. Getting late, right? I can feel the sun on my neck. But it's just a few feet off the horizon. I got a delivery to make on dogwood. I'd rather watch the sunset. Yeah, it's the truth. You gotta stop and breathe in that road. I bet while you're out driving, you let your eyes wander up the tree line. You just... Well, I bet you're more of a poet than old Joseph. So, where's Dogwood Drive? Listen, you and your dog would have been driving up and down 65 all night. Dogwood Drive's on the other side of... Well, to get there, you gotta take the zero. Look at zero is... The, the word zero, I don't know if you have the fidelity to see this, but the word zero has, um, like, a, uh, color moving around in it. Like, the shadows moving over it. Zero is a tough road to find. You can use my computer to look up directions. You have to head down to the basement and reset the circuit breaker first. I'll be happy to have the winding lights back up anyway. It's too damn quiet out here. Basement door's back there in the office. Appreciate your help, friend. And now, here, take this lamp. It gets dark. All right, I got a lamp now. Alright, let's go to the basement. Whoa, the basement is intense, and why are there dudes down here? Oh, basement people. Emily, Ben, and Bob sit in folded chairs behind a worn card table, papers, oddly shaped dice, and highway maps cover the tabletop. What? I know what's going on here. I'm gonna read this again. Emily, you, you can help me guess. You are the right kind of nerds to figure this out. Emily, Ben, and Bob sit in folding chairs behind a worn card table. Papers, oddly shaped dice, and highway maps cover the tabletop. Conway clears his throat. <clears throat> Have you all seen a breaker box down here? No. Oh. Huh. Sorry, I, I didn't know there was anybody down here. What? Did you hear something? 
Uh, no, sorry, I was looking at the rules again. It gets easier as you go. Look, you, you said you rolled a five, right? It means you get to pick up your marker and move it anywhere on the map. So, it's your turn now, right? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Where'd you put that 20-sided die? I don't see it. Did you drop it? <laughs> Should be easy enough to find and close in the dark. No. Nope. Guy lost his D20. God, I love that when you click, the um, your location is indicated by a horseshoe. Like a thrown horseshoe. A dusty, rusty sign bolted onto the wall. These are the rules. No open flames near the gasoline. No consumption of beer or spirits on the premises. In case of sudden darkness, do not panic. Relax. Count backwards from five. Strictly limit time spent in the basement to fewer than three minutes of every hour. This, so this feels to me a little like, tonally, a little like Welcome to Night Vale. I don't know if that's a thing y'all are familiar with. <gasps> There's the D20. Conway picks up the glowing 20-sided die and expects it. The number five is facing up. It's just a small piece of plastic, but it has a reassuring, almost comforting weight. He places the object in his jacket pocket. God damn it. Folding chairs are arranged around a worn card table. The chairs are empty, and the surface of the table is bare. Conway places the 20-sided die on the table. Can I actually, like, go down here and do things? I guess I can't, hey? Oh boy, surrealism. Ghost D and D. Let's go back upstairs. Hey, Joseph. There are some people in your basement playing some kind of game. In the basement? Nah, I don't think so. Maybe that lamplight's playing tricks on you. Alright. Role player ghosts. The spirit of all those who died, horrified, playing rifts. Ah, oh, there you go. The breaker box is past them. Alright, breaker. Ah, we got it going. That was easy. Okay. Let's get out of that basement. Ah, oh, the tr the God, this game is so nice looking. That like transition into the lit. Oh, wow. Also, what kind of badass gas station is this with a giant horse head? It's beautiful. Yeah, there it is. Just listen to those lights whine. Yep. Well, I better get those directions and head to the zero if you don't mind. So, computer's in the office. You're looking for Marquez. She knows her way around those roads. She'll get you to the zero. Her password is, uh... Damn, I usually just feel it out. <laughs> Muscle memory, you know? Kinda long. Kind of like a short poem, I think. One of those short poems that really sums it all up. We'll figure it out. Conway taps the key, waking the computer from its reverie. User. Well, shucks, Conway. User Conway is not real. God, the, the computer's text flickers, too. User. Uh, well, Joseph, I guess. Password. Uh, 
the stars drop away. The moon throbs. We'll only get later. Password accepted. That's my poem, my poem password. How's it going in there? Figuring it all out? Uh, sure you are. Messages. Message one is from Donald at hotmk.mail. Message two is from accounts at consolidated.mail. From Donald at hotmk.mail. Fragments dim of lovely forms. Joseph. I know it's been a while, and I know you're still sore, but there's a whole world in here, and we need your help to unmask it. Yes, the caves are cold and damp, and we are old and lame. Never mind. I can't remember why I even started writing this. I miss those days in the lab. To you and our dear Lula. Maybe you found your own Xanadu. Well, so have I. From accounts at consolidated.mail. Account standing urgent. Dear Equus Oils, this is an urgent, urgent automated message that your account is overdue by more than 14 days. In response, we have switched you to our low reliability Dirty Power Plus plan. Consider making a payment immediately to obviate the need for us to switch you to Sustained Brownout Select. Sincerely, your friends at the Consolidated Power Company. End of message. Address book? Uh, zero. Address the zero is not real. Uh, uh, Dogwood Drive. Address Dogwood Drive is not real. Uh, Marquez? Marquez residence. 100 Macondo Lane. Head northeast on 65 and turn left as you see that ugly tree that's always on fire. Look for the barn at the base of the mountain there. Can't miss it. You got it? Out there on Macondo somewhere. Yeah, that's it. Hey, look, while you're down there, I loaded that old TV of mine into your truck. I borrowed that thing from Weaver Marquez a number of years ago. Now the power's all weird over here. Can't pick up anything but static and public access anyway. She was always more of a reader, but maybe she wanted back at home. It was a nice TV. But I wanted to see games. Games is not real. Ooh, meta. <laughs> Alright, Joseph, I'm gonna be on my way. Sun's gone down. You and your dog better get on that road. You're gonna make your delivery. Conway scratches behind the dog's right ear. Take it easy, old man. All right, let's go. Conway heads back into the night. Oh yeah, We're rolling down I-60. There's the, oh, there's the wreck. Cool. Let's take a look. So that Macondo Marquez thing, that's a reference uh, to, uh, oh, somebody in chat already got it. Yeah, Gabriel Garcia Marquez uh, wrote 100 Years of Solitude. Uh, it's like a um, magical realism novel. All right, so the wreck, I guess we're not really able to see much except the swerving tire tracks and what look like sarcophagi spilled out on the road. Let's keep moving. Conway's ready to leave. So there's Equus Oils. Well, let's keep on rolling down the road. We're looking for that tree that's always on fire. Though we might be going the wrong way. Yeah, I think we are. Let's 
see. Marquez Farm. Yeah, northeast on 65. burning tree. A tall black oak burns on a hill above the road. Here we go. Turn left as soon as you see the ugly tree. Alright. So. Marquez Farmhouse. Act 1. Scene 2. Marquez Farmhouse. Conway rubs the dog's belly. So I guess we just head up the path here. Farmhouse up the hill a bit. Keep an eye on the truck, alright? I got the TV under my arm. A street lamp lights the base of a dusty path leading up the hill. So there's some questions about the video. Yes, it's supposed to look like this. There's no, there's no aliasing. It's, it's the game. <laughs> so you can stop worrying about it. That's how it's supposed to look. Oh, look at that resolving out of the fog. A family graveyard is set off to the side of the house. Headstones inscribed with the surnames of the unfortunate. Nowakowski, Padilla, Marquez. Ah, oh, look at those trees. God, this game is so nice looking. Wow, hi. I was just thinking. What a lovely house we have. Do you like it? Have you been here before? Did you happen to see an owl? Uh, I didn't see any owl. I know. I saw it at the window once. Big, ugly thing. All sound and fury. Well... It's gone now. There used to be another house here, but we had it destroyed and we built this one. It was very expensive and we got quite underwater. What do you do for work? Is it too difficult or do you like it very much? I was once a mathematician. You're looking for something in particular here. I'm looking for the zero. Oh, you're lost and that old blind man sent you, is that right? Of course he did. He's nice. Did he say anything nice about me? Did he send along a gift? He said you're too smart to watch TV. Oh, well, that was a nice thing to say. But he was wrong. I'm not as smart as I used to be. Well, actually, I suppose I am as smart as I used to be, but never any smarter. I don't learn anything new anymore. I write some figures. Nothing radical. I bet he sent that old TV along with you, didn't he? Of course he did. That was clever of him. Will you please set it up? Then I can explain to you. Get where you're going. The zero. I know. What? Oh my god. That's not how it's supposed to look. You made a mistake setting it up. Was it a foreign object to you? Which of your parents was it who wouldn't allow you to watch television? Ma thought she heard ghosts in the static. Oh, I know about that. She was ill, wasn't she? Mentally, I mean. Kind of distant? Fearful? Nah, things just had to be a certain way. You have it all backwards. 
I'm not surprised. Are you? Have you been paying attention? I don't think you have. Time to start paying attention now, Conway. Look closely at the television. Hey. Hey, wake up. He spaced out for a minute there. What do you keep out in that barn? It used to be tools and feed, then books. Now I think it's mostly spiders. TV's picking up the wrong signal. My cousin Shannon would know more about it. Fixes TVs for a living. Well, she used to. I think the new models are giving her some trouble. Your cousin? It's my father's brother's daughter, Shannon. About the same age. Well, we used to be. She's older now. She has a workshop up north a ways by the lake, right where Peony and Wax Road meet. Big bait and tackle shop. She fixes TVs in the back. Do you like fishing? Honestly, I'm not convinced you should bother with the Zero. I'd much rather you find my cousin and fix my TV, but I'll get you headed the right way. So it's pretty easy. Get back on 65, heading north, then take the first right after the artificial limb factory. From there, your arrival at the Zero is basically inevitable. Nice to know you, Conway. Keep your eyes open, especially in the dark. Alright. So I guess we have a choice now. Maybe we can go find Shannon, fix that TV. Or we can get to the Zero and... Where'd she go? Aw, oh, shucks. Back to the truck then. I just met the strangest lady. She seemed pretty nice. Marquez. Wonder where her folks are from. Conway's ready to leave. Let's go see Shannon Marquez up north ways by the lake where Peony and Wax Road meet. The truck jerks toward the shoulder, nearly run off the road by a swarm of dragonflies. Their wings beat briefly on the headlights and then disappear into the night. The creek runs alongside the highway, then turns into a dirty brick building. A grinding drone from within the building is faintly audible from the interstate. Floodlights on the lawn illuminate smokestacks. The edge of the building's parking lot, a large sign, partly obscured by trees, reads, A mare to official limb factory. Let's see, where did she say it was? 
Up north a ways, right where Peony and Wax Road meet. Maybe the lake's that way. Oh, a guitar player. A young man in gray stained clothes sits by the side of the road playing a worn guitar. To his left is a blue mug and to his right a weathered dog. Conway stands and listens. The young man strums absently on the guitar, hums tunelessly, occasionally mumbles a word. The young man stops playing, pulls the wet dollar bill out of his whiskey, hands it back to Conway. There it is. Conway pulls into the bait shop parking lot. Vaulted above the road in a thin steel bar, a handwritten sign reads, Live bait, minnow, small and also large for stripers, nightcrawlers, chips and beer. A green flyer hangs loosely from a bit of masking tape at eye level. To the shop's right, a dirty parking lot sprawls unevenly into grass, then eventually trees. The bait shop's open. Conway reads the flyer. Computer printed type in a bold font surrounds a clip art illustration of a TV set. The TV has arms, eyes, and legs. Shoulders are slouched. On the screen is a cartoon expression of ex exhausted nausea. A hot water bottle rests against its wire antenna. TV repair. No model too old. Inquire within. We do not sell digital converter boxes. Conway enters the bait shop. Narrow aisles crowded with lures, reels, rods, and snacks divide the shop lengthwise from the entrance to the cashier's counter. The left wall is lined with churning tanks of water. Three metal tanks aren't labeled, and the water is too agitated to get a clear view of what's inside each one. The contents of the first tank are vaguely gray, the second's a muddy pink. The third is clear, but shiny silver flecks occasionally flash along its surface. Conway's hand brushes against something roughly the size of his palm. Conway's hand comes in contact with a scaly, uneven surface, and he runs his fingers along the bottom. A bead of sweat bridges the inches from his temple to the water's surface. Something bites at his forearm. He recoils. Conway's fingers slip through something fleshy but inert. The sensation is nauseating. His elbow passes into the pinkish mass. He realizes he's about to be sick from the smell and pulls away. Conway steps away from the tanks. Actually, I want to I want to look into that third tank. The water seems to tremble with life. Conway can't tell if his hand is being nibbled by fish or massaged with the artificial current. As his eyes near the surface of the water, he sees something colorful glowing faintly at the bottom of the tank. A tremor spreads from his elbow out to his fingertips and up from the base of his shoulder. His vision flickers. The water is running warm under his skin now and has a sensation something about to snap. His eyes close. He lays on a rooftop. New shingles rough beneath his back, swelling in the noon sun. He's exhausted. They must have started before dawn. His legs are sore from holding stable on the uneven surface. His wrist from breaking old sealant, fingers carefully lifting shingles to hammer down new one. His boss, Ira, yells from the idling truck below. Shades his hand with his eyes. Or shades his eyes with his hand. Beard be good. It's barely past noon, he's worked a full day already. What could the harm be? Maybe a shot at the counter just to get his eyes open. Then a beer. He could offer to drive into town for lunch, stop into that place on Cumberland. The cashier pushes Conway roughly on the shoulder. He's been talking. Yelling, maybe. It's all an echo now. Conway looks up. Neck stiff with pain, right palm still tingling. Cashier points to the tank, then above to a few holes torn in the wall. Nail holes from which an electrical sign has come dislodged and fallen into the water. He helps Conway to his feet, looks at him pitifully, and returns to the cash register. A wiry cashier stands behind the register, preoccupied with a Sudoku puzzle. I'm going to ask him about the basketball game. The cashier switches on the radio, an AM sports broadcast is playing, but Conway can't be sure if it's meant to answer or drown out his questions. A handwritten sign on the door behind the counter reads, TV repairs by appointment, please consult with cashier. The cashier knocks a few times on the door and waits, occasionally glancing at his puzzle. After a few moments of no answer, he notices a smaller note written on the sign, reads it, points it out to Conway. Weaver. Got your message. Have left for the old mine. Don't know if I'll see you there or what. Ready either way. Shannon. The 
vaulted above the road in a thin steel bar. Handwritten sign reads, Live Bait. Let's head out to the zero. Sixty-five heading north through the first right after the artificial limb factory. All right, y'all. First right after the artificial limb factory. On ramp. Act one. Scene three, Elkhorn Valley. Conway brushes some dirt off the dog's hat. How's it going, old man? Hey, you got some on your hat. You pick that up on the road? You like it out here, don't you? Picking up strange dirt on the road. Shannon speaks into the large brick cell phone held to her ear. Oh, that's cool. I get to decide what Shannon says. No, it's fine. I'll figure it out. That's true. Just... Never mind, I have to go. Sorry. Shannon hangs up the phone, puts it away. Am I Shannon now? Oh, I am. Excuse me, ma'am. I saw the light was on, and I'm looking for the on-ramp to... Do you believe in ghosts? Well... Let's see. I, I do believe a place can be haunted. That's what you mean. No, that's not what I mean. Well, okay. I run across a few people, acted like ghosts, kind of there, kind of somewhere else. Hmm, me too. Oh yeah? Did, uh, what led you down here? Yes. So, I guess this place must be pretty important. Maybe I'm in the right place after all. Here's what it is. I drive deliveries for a shop called Lizette's Antiques. I'm out here trying to finish this job. You're making a delivery to the mine? Oh, uh, no. I have a delivery for Five Dogwood Drive, and I can't remember ever seeing that address before. No, I heard I need to take a highway called the Zero. So I met this young lady named Weaver Marquez. She sent me this way, so here I am. Uncommon kind of place for an on-ramp, but that's what it's been like so far anyway with what? The Zero. Is that around here? I've never heard of the damn Zero. That doesn't sound like a real highway, but I know Weaver. I've known her all my life. She was... She's my cousin. I'm Shannon Marquez. Weaver doesn't lie. One time, when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was crushed metal everywhere. And we'd be hearing it echo through the house for years, she said. I was very upset, crying, and my dad walked through the door. Just come back from a trip to the junkyard collecting scrap metal. Fashioned into wind chimes. I was angry, but she said it wasn't a joke, and it wasn't a lie. At the time, I thought she meant it as a riddle or a puzzle, but we was not a puzzle. She's a mystery. So. Maybe the zero is down here somewhere. Yeah, maybe it is. Well, I won't mind the company. I got business down here myself. Talked to Weaver earlier this evening, too, or anyway, she talked to me. Hard to tell if she's listening sometimes. Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old Elkhorn mine. Said I'd find 
Something I've been looking for. What are you looking for? I'm not exactly sure. I have a few ideas. I'll know it when I see it. Not such a bad thing, you showing up now. All told, I'd rather not go down there alone. Your dog should stay up here, though. It's no place for a dog. There's an old mine runs pretty deep and tangled. If we're gonna go down into it, find your on-ramp and whatever else. We gotta keep our bearings. I don't wanna get turned around. I got some gear here to measure conductivity, frequency, response, stuff like that. Maybe we can find a way to put out a signal ahead, do some analysis to figure out what kind of topology we're up against. Topology. Okay. Topology. It's the science of continuous space, my friend. The way this twisty maze of passages fits together. Look at that animation, the way that he's like kind of sauntering into the mine. It's fantastic. The game reminds me a lot of uh, Out of This World. That runs into the mine's PA system. You think it still works? Only one way to find out. All right, give it a whirl. Uh, anybody down there? Nothing. Hmm. Oh, there's no power. Yeah, okay, even when this old mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. You know, the miners used to have to pay just to run the fans and the lights. Yeah, they got paid in these shitty plastic tokens, coal script, you know. And if they want to run the fans for a bit to clear the air up, well, you got to put a token in. My parents used to work here, so did Weaver's parents, I guess. A lot of folks' parents worked here. Well, so let's just... Let's just head into the mine, see what we can see. No, I definitely feel better getting some readings first. We don't know what it's like down there anymore. Years of seasonal changes, seismic irregularities could have totally re reconfigured it. I'm not going in blind, neither are you. I bet we just gotta free up some power for the PA system. Everything's rationed. Here, set up that lamp of yours. I'll go and plug these ceiling lights. Conway tries to think of something clever to say. I heard the speakers back here crackle a bit. It's on now, right? Try saying something to the mouthpiece. Uh, <clears throat> well, ah, okay, I hear you. We need to measure the echo delay time, figure out how deep the tunnels run. Just some, make some noises into the mouthpiece. rubs a finger along the surface of the mouthpiece. Hmm. Hums a deep tone into the mouthpiece. Damn, that's a long delay. These tunnels run deep. I bet some of them have ruptured or joined up with the cave system. All right, I set up my spectrum analyzer, so just say something in the mouthpiece so we can get a sense of how narrow the mine tunnels are. Don't be shy, just say anything that comes in your head. Tell me a story about something, or what'd you have for breakfast today? Here's a story. I used to work doing roof repair. We even fixed up a church roof once. Seemed like a big project, but doable. But I was too hungover. We ran late. Got it. Looks like the tunnels are pretty cramped. Low ceilings. Hope you're ready to stoop a bit. Ah. Well, you're probably used to it. One more test. We just need to know if the air is breathable or if it's too thin or too dense. Just sit real close to the mouthpiece and breathe. I'll measure the resonance of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Just try to relax. Try to breathe naturally. <sighs> Breathes and thinks about resting. Breathes remembers a moment when he was younger. Getting some pretty strong readings here. I think we're in good shape, but keep at it for a minute. Breathes and visualizes a cold drink. Conway breathes and relaxes, a peel of feedback and loose rock engulfs him. I 
Act One, Scene Four, Elkhorn Mine. Jesus, you all right? What the hell? I'm okay. I got you. You're all right. Shit, your leg's pinned. I'm gonna pull you out. We have to get you out of here. There you go. Okay. You hurt? You put any weight on that leg? Oh, it's all messed up. Here, let, let's get you on the tram. There you go. Now let's see if this thing has power. Well, okay. There's some luck, right? Should be able to ride this tram right out one of the auxiliary exits. If there are any. I think there are. I can walk. No way, you need to stay off that leg. You'll just do more damage. We'll just find the exit, then figure out what to do from there. That's our first priority. So, the controls are on your side. Let's get moving. All right, where's my controls at? Oh, I just, let me see. There's a, a little canary cage and a telegraph machine. Oh, here we are. This may be hard to believe, it's hard to believe myself, but this whole branch was underwater last I heard. Well, how'd that happen? Some careless miner, some unintended machine bored through into an underground lake. Water came in pretty fast, a lot of folks got trapped in the tunnel. I only heard parts of how it went from there. Sanitized for the bereaved. You know how these big companies are, but there was gossip too. Trap miners couldn't get the pump going because the power was rationed. So they shut off all the lights, but even then it wasn't enough. So I guess it was dark when they... Hey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Doesn't matter now. Look, this old turntable's still wired up. The controls are dead, but I can use my signal generator to switch tracks. The water hasn't damaged it too much. Or we can just keep heading down this tunnel. All this junk hanging up around the turntables from the company store. Just... Junk, you know? Miners would buy it to decorate the place for his landmarks, I guess. Hard to know which way is which down here. It's so dim and gray. Shannon collects two clip leads from her signal generator at the turntable's electrical panel. We're on the track between the animal bones and the rowboats, so... Ooh, creepy. Pendulum in the casket. Oh, wow, cool. Dusty reel to reel tape player stashed beneath the track, loaded with tape but starved for power. Oh, well, and that's the end of that line. And back we go. Swinging. 
Chana connects two clip leads from a signal generator to the turntable's electrical panel. Let's go... Bat feeder in the scarecrow. Wait a second. Whoa! Did y'all see that? Watch. There's miners down here. You can see them. Look. Ah, that's so creepy. Ooh. Keep that light on. Damn. Tracks are all messed up here. This tram isn't going any further. I wonder what's down that tunnel. Well, ain't us. That's for damn sure. Oh, that's so cool. Shannon connects two clip leads from a signal generator to the turntable's electrical panel. The animal bones in the rowboat. Oh yeah, more ghosts. I like how they don't appear every time, they just appear sometimes. Yeah, see? Looks like we got an exit. Huh, thank God, okay. Let's go. Yeah, okay, I just... That tunnel where the tracks are broken, I'd like to take a look down there. <laughs> That's awesome, you pick who volunteers. If you wait for me here, I'll just go take another look around. Yeah, sure, okay, uh, I'll be right here. Alright, Shannon. Let's head in here by ourselves. Wow, that's a big pile of helmets. Whoa. Just goes to the helmets and then stops. Hey, stranger. You found what you were looking for? Yeah, maybe. Look, we're not gonna talk about that anymore, okay? Fair enough. How's the leg? I can walk on it, but it's painful. Oh, I got some painkillers here I could help you out. I got them from a friend when I sprained my wrist installing a security system. You better let me drive, though. They are pretty strong. Yeah, maybe that's best. Don't worry, I've been driving since I was nine. I still need to find the zero. It's like I told you, Weaver doesn't lie. If she's sent here to find your on-ramp, this is where she'd be looking. Maybe you just weren't listening closely enough. That's not exactly what she said. I saw Weaver at my workshop. That's up north, by Lake Nolan, right at Wax and Peonia, back at the bait shop. Pretty glamorous, right? These are the times we live in. 
She's either up there or back at the farmhouse. Whichever you want to head to first, just let me know. Conway stands solemnly in front of the dog. Old man, the Shannon. Nice to meet you. I got some dried banana slices in my bag. Would you like one? I don't really like them anyway. Oh, look at him limping now. Lysette's Antiques. Guess this is your truck. This is my truck. Conway has places to go. Let's go up to the bait shop again. Conway and Shannon pull into the bait shop parking lot. Vault above the road on a thin steel bar, a handwritten sign reads, Live Bait. Enter the side door to Shannon's workshop. The walls are lined with cheap metal shelves loaded precariously with vacuum tubes, awkwardly shaped metal casings, and coffee cans full of electronic components. Shannon leads Conway to the back of the room where a few TV sets in various states of disassembly are set up on a rough wooden table. She flips the switch on the power strip they're all plugged into, and the TV sets tremble to life. A ghostly white wobble flickers along one screen in a rhythmic pattern. Another's just snow. A third, a small security monitor in the back of the table, is oscillating between different shades of black. Conway asks Shannon where she saw Weaver. Shannon points to a small security monitor on the table. The image on the screen is just black, but it seems to be fading slowly, imperceptibly, between different shades of black. Shannon tweaks a few knobs on the side of the monitor, but the picture doesn't change. The screen has a cavernous black. It hums, swells, the pace of the tide. Conway loses track of the workshop's walls that could be inches away or miles. He's adrift on black water, traveling swiftly toward a rocky shore. There should be a lighthouse or a buoy on these rocks, but it's too dangerous. Shannon switches off the power strip. Weaver's not here. All right, well, back to Weaver's house, I guess. Back to the Marquez farm. Act one, scene five, Marquez farmhouse. Limping dude. <laughs> Got that slow reveal of the farmhouse. It's so good. go. Oh, they stop because he has trouble and she has to help him. Oh, that's so interesting. God, these, like, the game is full of these, like, tiny little touches that I think are just so great to, like, build up the aesthetic. And now that there's two of us, we observe things using the, the two-person prompt. There's nobody buried here, you know. It's decorative, I guess. Or it's art or something? I don't know. So what are the names on the headstones? Nowakowski, Padilla, I don't know those names. Maybe the people who lived here before? I know when they bought this property they already had a house and everything. Maybe they have some other symbolic meaning. Oh, look at that headstone. Marquez. 
You used to think it was from my parents. Well, now I don't know. It changes so fluidly between who you control and who you don't. So, this is where she was? Yeah, it makes sense. This was where Weaver and her parents lived. They took out a bunch of loans, you know, had this place built. You have any debts? I owe some people some apologies. Well, you're lucky that's all you owe. My parents were like that, till the company's store found a way to get to them. For my dad, it was tokens to run the fan and air purifiers. For my mom, it was the canaries. Two solutions to the same problem, but they sure sounded different. Weaver had debts, too. A lot of them, all tuition. She said she was a mathematician, something. Yeah, she studied some esoteric stuff about... Something about using math to translate between Spanish and English. I think eventually Weaver put those math skills to work on the red numbers in the family checkbook, got a clear sense of how hopeless their situation was. So she left. Guess she just drove away in the middle of the night. Woke up in the morning, the car was gone. Never came back. Till tonight. Someone else told me to come here and talk to her. Huh, okay, I guess we two aren't the only ones she's been talking to. Oh, that's not something you see every day, that old TV right there. Well, that's a damn antique for you. I had a model like that in the shop once, but I had to sell it off to make rent. Most painful decision I ever made. So you mind if I open it up? Looks like the dials are all corroded. Screen's leaking light a bit. Come on, I bet Lysette would never forgive you letting a specimen like that fall into disrepair. These tubes are all messed up. Looks like they've been in a swamp or a cave or something. There's moss growing on this one. Ah, uh, that's okay. I got a few spares in my bag. Here. Uh, here, I pulled this out of an old computer monitor. It just needs to be recalibrated a bit. Okay, that ought to... Should be seeing something now. You seeing anything? Uh, a little bit to the left. Damn. Okay, here. I, I think the contacts are dirty. Don't go telling my customers I clean off dirty old vacuum tubes with spit. There, just gotta turn it north south and. Oh shit. End of Act One. I got chills. Goosebumps. Whoa. Alright. Let's um let's take a little break. And uh, we'll we'll pick up Act Two when we get back. So Alright. Stick around. <laughs> 